In this module, we will discuss the components of the emergency treatment area. This will help the hazmat awareness level trained person to know which areas to avoid to minimize any potential exposure to a hazardous material in the decontamination area. Key questions will cover. How do we secure the hospital in a mass casualty event? What are the components of the hospital decontamination plan? And how do personnel notify the emergency response team in the event of a contaminated patient or mass casualty event? Decontamination, also known as decon, is the process of removing or neutralizing surface contaminants that have accumulated on personnel and equipment. The process will reduce or prevent the spread of hazardous agents to employees and into the community. Awareness personnel are not trained to work in the decontamination process of an emergency response. Recent chemical incidents involving the evacuation of the public and the increased threat of terrorist activities involving hazardous materials increased the need for a more coordinated, pre-planned emergency response action where mass casualties and the need for mass decontamination are anticipated. Mass decontamination at the scene is the preferred method of decontaminating multiple victims. However, many of the victims may self-dispatch to the hospital where an initial decontamination process must take place prior to emergency department entry. At the scene of a chemical emergency, decontamination is a quick extraction of victims or entrants from the hot zone in order to remove hazardous material from the clothing and begin medical treatment. The first station is a gross rinse of the victim with copious amounts of water. The clothing is removed, starting at the head, then moving to the feet. Once the clothing is removed, a secondary wash and rinse may be required. The victim is then transferred to a triage area in a mass casualty situation or directly transferred to the ambulance for secondary decontamination and treatment at the hospital. OSHA deems it appropriate to define two functional zones during hospital-based decontamination activities. These zones guide the application of OSHA's recommendations, and they are Hospital Decontamination Zone and the Hospital Post-Decontamination Zone. These zones are sometimes referred to as the emergency treatment area for a mass casualty event. The Hospital Decontamination Zone is used to evaluate the situation and control entry into the hospital. DECON team members will begin triage to distinguish contaminated individuals from other patients arriving at the hospital. Victims who require immediate stabilization before they enter the DECON system will be assessed in the emergency treatment area. The DECON team members will identify injuries that will require special handling inside the DECON system. The triage serves as the basis for staging the patients upon which they'll be given a treatment versus decontamination designation. If they are stable for decontamination, they will be directed to the ambulatory or taken to the non-ambulatory lanes of the decontamination corridor. The hospital post-decontamination zone serves as a clean, uncontaminated area where emergency treatment can occur. Once the decontamination of the patient has been verified with detection devices, they can be admitted to the hospital. It is crucial that the post-decontamination zone be located at or near the entrance to the emergency department so that security can control the area. The emergency treatment area can be divided into three zones that hazmat first responders can readily identify. Hot, warm, and cold zones. The hot zone is where self-dispatched victims or patients from ambulances are staged while awaiting triage. This is the area with the highest potential for contamination. The warm zone consists of the decontamination lanes for ambulatory and non-ambulatory patients. All patients should be free of hazardous substances prior to entering the clean treatment area of the cold zone. The emergency treatment area represents a complete system designed to receive, triage, and process contaminated patients by providing emergency medical treatment and admission into the hospital setting. The emergency treatment area includes pre-decontamination waiting or staging areas for victims, the actual decontamination area, and the post-decontamination victim inspection area. 
This area will typically end at the emergency department door. All unauthorized or untrained personnel should avoid the staging area for victims and the decontamination area. Hospital emergency response team members that are trained at the awareness level can assist with the initial setup of the decon corridor. They will also play a major role in supplying the decontamination zone. Once the patients begin arriving from the hot zone, either by ambulance or on foot, they should be assembled in a staging area for triage. Only life-saving treatment is performed in the emergency treatment area with all other patients triaged, classified, and logged in prior to entry into the ambulatory or non-ambulatory decon lanes. The exterior clothing is either removed by the patient or cut off by the decontamination worker. A series of wash and rinse stations will remove any chemical that has permeated clothing onto the skin or has contacted the eyes. Personnel use detection equipment to verify the decontamination process before processing the patient into the post-decontamination zone. The most neglected function in a response to a chemical release inside a hospital is the evacuation and isolation of the spill area from employees and bystanders. Likewise, it is a challenge for even the largest facilities to establish the decontamination and treatment areas and effectively secure those areas from unauthorized personnel. Site security helps maintain order and control traffic around the decontamination facility and the hospital entrances. Security officers might need to control a contaminated individual to prevent other staff from being exposed and to protect equipment. Security officers also ensure contaminated victims do not bypass the decontamination hospital or enter the emergency department without passing inspection. During any event involving a hazardous material emergency, the hospital post-decontamination zone should be located in the emergency treatment area and close to the entrance of the hospital. An emergency decontamination plan is part of a comprehensive emergency response plan for hospitals. It is required by the Joint Commission, otherwise known as JCO, the American Osteopathic Healthcare Association, OSHA, the Environmental Protection Agency, and many states' departments of environmental quality. The Emergency Decontamination Plan describes the agencies and department responsibilities, as well as the available resources at the hospital and in the community. The plan should detail the procedures to be followed in dealing with contaminated people and equipment with a special emphasis on self and buddy decontamination. Once the hospital receives notification of a contaminated person, the emergency decontamination plan should identify exactly who must be notified. Clinicians and other hospital staff that have a role in receiving and treating contaminated patients should be activated or placed on standby. Since the hospital is far from the incident, the exposure of first receivers is limited to the amount of contaminant on the victims, their clothing, and personal effects. Setting up decontamination operations involves establishing the decon zone with access to decon supplies. Staff should assemble the decon shelter and decon equipment. Runoff from the decon operations should be containerized and disposed of in accordance with local, state, and federal regulations. The specialized decontamination response team members will have more advanced training enabling them to perform the decontamination of arriving patients. Awareness-trained personnel may assist those members to ensure safety of the facility and other personnel, and to help set up the decontamination operation area by establishing the decontamination zone, ensuring access to supplies, and assembling the necessary decontamination equipment. Only the decontamination response team members should be performing triage and the actual decontamination of patients. Typically, these team members will also clean all the equipment, manage the wastewater, and participate in the team debriefing.
Awareness-trained personnel can establish decontamination zones, ensure the safety of the facility and personnel at the scene, and assemble decontamination equipment. In order to perform triage, more advanced training is necessary. The decontamination plan should clearly identify the hazard control zones so that workers have a safe work environment and patients observe a clearly defined, well-organized structure for addressing their injuries. Safety is paramount. All of this can be achieved by limiting access to the hospital grounds and having an overall security plan for the entire hospital and for the removal of hazardous waste from the premises. Event awareness trained personnel need to understand their role in the emergency treatment area. As we talked about, these personnel can assist the decontamination and triage workers while avoiding those areas that may require additional protective clothing. Knowing the decontamination plan and their role in activating the hospital emergency response team members is crucial for trained personnel to minimize the impact to a healthcare facility.